Do you have any idea of what it was that was clicking for people and why this was taking off? Was it something you were writing, something specific? Do you feel like it was just timely? It's probably a couple of things. So one, I think, is that the way I framed those questions as in human progress that we've made so far is just the greatest fact of history, the greatest thing that's happened to humanity, and it deserves to be studied for that reason. I think that basic reasoning resonated with a lot of people. I think also the way I approached it was something that clicked with people. It really started this whole thing very bottom up. So rather than go out and read grand theories of history or anything, I said, before I ask the question or attempt to answer the question of what caused the Industrial Revolution or where does progress come from, I should first be able to answer the question of what was the Industrial Revolution? <laughs> what progress actually has been made? And honestly, when I started this, I didn't really know. To me, and I think probably to a lot of people still today, and to me back four or five years ago, the Industrial Revolution was that time with steam engines and trains, and I think a lot of coal and stuff. Might have had a little bit more to it, but it was pretty fuzzy in my mind, kind of like exactly what it consists of. I knew that to do this in a really sound way and to not be just bloviating and kind of armchair theorizing, I was going to have to dive deep into the details and the particulars of the stories. And so I said, let me just start with the history. Literally, what were the major inventions and discoveries and breakthroughs and how did they happen and when did they happen and who made them and what were they motivated by and what made it possible and who funded it? Questions like this. And so that's where I began. And I began by simply telling those stories. And so I think the stories that have caught people's imagination and attention have been things like, okay, my first breakout post, the first post I wrote that went viral, was about the history of the bicycle, where I started just by posing this question of why wasn't the bicycle invented until the late 1800s? Why couldn't we have had bicycles in Roman Empire or something? It's just a mechanical device. It's not as if it depended on the some science of chemistry or electromagnetism or anything it seems like just a mechanic tinkering could come up with it. So why did it take so long? And that question really captured people's attention. And then a lot of people had theories. It's really funny. People would just kind of jump into theorizing. And so people threw out all sorts of answers. I asked this on Twitter to start. And people were like, oh, maybe it was the roads. The roads were really bad. Or maybe it was because people already had horses. There's just all sorts of ideas that people threw out there. And so I said, well, okay, to answer this, let's just go look at the history. When and how and why was the bicycle invented? And so as soon as you do that, it starts throwing some of those theories out the window, like bicycles actually came along before there were good roads. The roads were still quite badly paved. And in fact, it was the cyclists who formed a good part of what got known as the good roads movement and pressured for the roads to be improved. So it wasn't that better roads caused bicycles. It was actually more the other way around. And so then when you look into it, you find that actually centuries before the bicycle, people were thinking about self-powered vehicles, essentially, right? And were sketching pictures for them, but they were all trying to do them as four-wheeled carriages. That was just too big and heavy to really work. And it wasn't until the early 1800s that somebody came up with a light two-wheeled thing that was small and light enough to actually work. But even his device didn't have pedals. You just sort of kicked along like a scooter, you know? I hear that for children these days, this is actually the preferred way to get kids to learn how to ride a bike. Instead of training wheels, they have a little thing like this. It harkens back to the original proto-bicycle from like 1817. And then you just see the gradual evolution, like somebody puts pedals on the bike, but it still doesn't have gears. And then somebody puts gears on the bike. And then somebody puts a chain on the bike. And then somebody adds the rubber tires. And so you just see it evolve through these stages. And it makes you realize how much the right design for the bicycle was actually non-obvious. It took a lot of design iteration to go through different ways that you could possibly construct a bicycle. And so, yeah, those kinds of stories capture people's imagination. And it's a lot of what captures my imagination as well. It's just every one of these things is fascinating. 